Hey, hello and welcome to Prime Code Media. My name is Sana Mapena. In this video, I'll be discussing the CSS display property and we'll also show how it can be used to change the display of elements. I'll be using code pen for this discussion. Here I have two paragraphs with the words CSS display property, which is the topic of our discussion. And uh, I also have uh, two images of the table mountain in Cape Town. Before we go deep into our discussion of the CSS display property, it's important to remember that uh, CSS treats HTML elements as boxes. This is very important to understanding the display property. I discussed in detail the treatment of HTML elements as boxes by CSS in the video on the CSS box model concept. Please feel free to also check that video out. The display property specifies the appearance and behavior of elements. In this video, I'll be focusing on the four common CSS display property values, namely block, inline, inline block, and none. Let's start with block elements. Common block elements are headers, paragraphs, divisions, and lists. Block elements take up the entire width and do not let other elements occupy the space next to them. For example, here I have uh, two paragraphs. So these two paragraphs are not sitting next to each other. And this is because they are block elements and the block elements take up the entire width and do not let other elements sit next to them. To have a better view of this width that I am talking about, I'm going to give these two paragraphs a background color so to do that i am going to come here inside my css file and use the ptech to target these two paragraphs like so so the tag name and uh, followed by a set of curly braces inside here i'm going to write my declaration that will be my property value pair so what we want to change or give to these two paragraphs is a background color so this is the css uh, property and then the value will be the color uh, let's give the uh, these two paragraphs a red background let's see how it looks now here these two paragraphs now have a red background color and as you can see these are very short paragraphs they are just up to here but as you can see the red color stretches up to the edge of the screen and this is what i was talking about just a short while ago that uh, block elements uh, occupy or take up the entire width also important to note uh, regarding block elements is that we can change their width and height. I am going to change their width and height, but before I do that, please note that the width can either be specified in percentages or static pixels. For example, if I say the width of these elements is 50%, what as you can see now the the width is 50 percent what this means is that the width of these elements will be 50 percent of the screen where you are viewing them so if you are viewing these elements on a uh, laptop uh, it will be 50 percent of your laptop screen if it is an ipad uh, it will be the 50% uh, of that iPad screen. So I am going to remove this because the aim here was just to show you that you have the option of uh, specifying the width in percentages or in uh, static pixels. So for this discussion, I am going to specify the width in static pixels. So I'm going to give these two elements a 350 pixel width. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, so now this is 350 pixel. That is the width of our two elements. And then the height, uh, I'm going to give these two elements a height of, let me give them a 50 pixel height. 
now here's how these two elements now look we have changed uh, their width and height the width is 350 pixel and the height is 50 pixel while by default the block elements do not let other elements occupy the space next to them we can actually make them sit next to each other on the same line we can make them do this by changing the value of their display property to inline uh, i'm going to do that inside here i'm going to say the display property display and the uh, value is uh, in line now as you can see for the first time these two paragraph elements are sitting next to each other on the same line as you can see although we have now lost our ability to specify their height and width uh, we have managed to make them sit next to each other and this is because in line elements take or only take as much space as is necessary examples of inline elements are uh, spans uh, images and anchor tags let me use one of these uh, uh, elements or inline elements to style one of these paragraphs here for example what if i want to give this weight display in the second paragraph its own background color i can do that by using a span which is an inline element now let me come here i'm going to add a span here a span has an opening and a closing tag right like so and then i am going to cut the word display from here and paste it inside the span and then i am going to go into the css file and use the span tag name to target that word for styling i'll say span and then background color and the value of the css property will be let me give it a blue background color now as you can see only this word has a blue background color so we have managed to specifically target this word for styling and this is possible by using an inline element and this is possible because inline elements as i explained earlier only take as much space as necessary images are also inline elements because by default they are able to sit next to each other uh, what makes them different from other inline elements though is that we can apply height and width values to them which means we can treat them as inline block elements let me give them a 350 uh, a, a, a width uh, size uh, i'm going to do that here i'm going to use the check name img and then give them a width of uh, 350 pixel now as you can see we have now changed the size of these images and this is because although they are by default the inline elements as i said we are able to treat them as inline block elements by changing their width and height so for more on inline block elements let's go back to these two paragraphs here
we saw how we lost our ability to specify the width and height of these two paragraphs after changing their display property value to inline but now what if we want to or want these two paragraphs to sit next to each other and still be able to define their height and width we can achieve that by changing their display property value to inline block which i mentioned just a short while ago when i was talking about images to do that i'll come here inside my uh, css file and uh, here change the display property to from inline to inline block so i'll just add inline block i'll just add block here you'll see that after changing inline to inline block we now have these uh images or rather uh, 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 these two elements they have now the sizes that we specified the earlier and they are still sitting next to each other and this is made possible by uh changing the value of their display property from inline to inline block finally what if you want to hide or make things uh, disappear and reappear on your web page like for example if you are running a quiz and you want to hide and show correct answers you'll be able to do this by setting the display property value of your elements to none let's do that uh, to these two image elements so if we come here and the first give this one of these images its own class i'm going to give the first uh, yes let me give the first image its own class like so i'll say the class the class name will be let me give it a name say image one so i'm going to come here inside my css file and use the class name remember the class name must be preceded by a dot okay dot uh, followed by class name which is image one a set of curly braces and now i'm going to change the display property uh, to uh, none okay so the display property is none the image has disappeared its space or the position it previously occupied is now occupied by this uh, image so it's like that image never existed now i want you to see what happens when i use the visibility property and set it to hidden uh, i'm going to comment out this line of code like so and then use visibility property visibility and set it to hidden now using the visibility property and setting it to hidden removes uh, the element but keeps its position so the image is gone but its position remains with that we've come to the end of the discussion of the css display property if you found this video useful and enjoyed the discussion please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out till we call again next time take care bye bye